Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. Today we'll be discussing why the cantankerous goblin named Griphook betrayed Harry, Ron, and Hermione during the events of the Deathly Hallows. Before we can answer this question, however, we must first cover how these three friends managed to get into a position in which a goblin was able to betray them. As many of you will know, the Wizarding World has a rather long-standing historical distrust of goblins and vice versa. So, how did this agreement even come to pass? Well, when Harry, Ron, and Hermione were captured by a group of Snatchers, led by Fenrir Greyback, they were taken to Malfoy Manor. Here, they were imprisoned in the house's cellar and discovered a group of other captives, including Luna Lovegood, Dean Thomas, Mr. Ollivander, and, you guessed it, Griphook. While Hermione is being tortured by Bellatrix Lestrange, Harry's beloved friend and house elf, Dobby, appears and manages to transport everyone safely out of Malfoy Manor to Shell Cottage, the coastal home of Bill Weasley and Fleur Delacour. But despite successfully saving the entire group of captives, Dobby himself is killed during the rescue, leading to Harry and his friends laying him to rest outside of Shell Cottage. Seeing the care and respect that Harry gives to Dobby the house elf, Griphook, who is typically rather taciturn and distrustful of wizards, believes Harry Potter to be a better human than most. He's also quite affected by the fact that Harry and his friends chose to save him, a goblin, from imprisonment at Malfoy Manor. And it is with this view that Griphook agrees to help the trio break into Gringotts to steal Voldemort's next Horcrux, Helga Hufflepuff's Golden Cup, in exchange for the Sword of Gryffindor, a blade of goblin-made steel. So what's the catch here? Why didn't Griphook stick to his word? Well, the truth is, he technically did. Griphook made good on his promise to get Harry, Ron, and Hermione into the vault containing the Golden Cup at Gringotts Bank. He then took the sword and left. As you can see, the exchange was complete. Unfortunately, the trio had rather banked on the idea that Griphook would also be getting them out of Gringotts, which unfortunately, they never explicitly stated. The friends were also planning to hold onto the sword a little while longer after acquiring the Golden Cup so that they could continue to use it to destroy Horcruxes. It's likely then that Griphook betrayed them the way that he did for several reasons. The first of course being that he had technically fulfilled his side of the bargain and was simply taking what he was owed. The second being that he had likely overheard Harry, Ron, and Hermione whispering about how they would need to delay giving Griphook the sword, fueling his distrust of the wizards. And the third, as a rule, goblins believed that items made by their kind rightfully belonged to them, and that witches and wizards who purchased things like goblin-made steel were only renting them. This means that to Griphook, since the original owner of the sword, Godric Gryffindor, had long since died, Harry never truly owned the sword, despite it being left to him in Professor Dumbledore's will, as only a goblin could ever truly have ownership of an item like this. So really, it was never Harry's to barter away, at least in Griphook's opinion. And with that, we've come to the end of today's video. What did you think? Do you agree? Why do you think Griphook betrayed the trio? Please share your thoughts in the comments below, and as always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, remember, it does not do to dwell on dreams and forget to live.